everyone, and welcome back to the Sparks of Ingenuity podcast. I am sorry for the delay on today's podcast, but I do hope that uh, you find some interest here. Today, I'm talking about um, something my sister and I were going over the other day. We were in Target, and I came to this realization that I want to do too many things. And, like, I've I've known this, but in that moment, I was like, wouldn't it be great to have a little, like, artisan coffee shop where uh, my brother is actually a barista right now, among other things that he does, but he is a barista right now, and he really enjoys coffee, and he is very somewhat snobby about his coffee, um, I, I feel is a fair thing to say. Uh, But anyway, so I I feel like that would be something where he would thrive, and then I've always wanted to, like, do the whole coffee shop thing, but I'm really fortunate with my jobs right now, so I'm kind of, you know, I'm not going to go and seek that out at the moment. Um, But, yeah, he's, like, really into that, and I have always wanted to sell some of the things that I make. Uh, I just do some knitting things here and there, socks, hats, that kind of thing. I sew dresses every once in a while, and it would be cool to be able to put those things onto a shelf for people to purchase. But my sister, who is the one that I was spending the time with that day, she's always wanted to open, like, a cupcake shop. And I was like, well, imagine we have this, like, little cafe with a wall of just, like, different, like, homemade things, like, knitted and sewn things that they can purchase and then we have coffee because you know it's a coffee shop and then we have um baked goods you know you can put your cupcakes and cakes up for sale I can sell pie and breads and I love baking I just I never have enough people to eat what I make so I was like that would be so perfect and then we could have a little seating area where you know we can offer like um, my sister's going to be an art teacher. She's she's finishing school for that in a couple of years here. And I was like, you can use that not, you know, when you're not teaching at in, in an elementary classroom, we can do like painting nights or whatever here where you get to, you know, teach people just how to copy things and paint and enjoy art. Um, and then I was like, we can do open mic nights and all that kind of stuff and just make it like a really cool, I feel like, a lot of people in this past year with um, COVID have kind of felt the lack of community and the lack of just people in, in their lives, and they yearn for those experiences again. And I'm no different from that, and I've always been kind of that person, but I think that that's something that really drives this dream, this idea Um as a business is, this is something that, you know, I can't find anywhere are these things combined together in this way, but I want to, you know, and I feel like other people will want to, especially after the year that we've just had. And, you know, I say that kind of as like almost a winding down statement because recently I live in Minnesota for, and I know every state is, is a bit different. So I say this bearing in mind where I am living currently, Um, but we've just been notified that our mask mandate for indoors will, and all other restrictions will be going away on July 1st or earlier if, you know, we have, um, 70% of the population has at least one of their vaccines or something to that effect. Um, so I say that, you know, with this, this new ending in sight, and a real desire to see what what's going to be in the future here for everyone. And I, I hope that other people see that with me and want to see that with me and feel the same way as well because, you know, I've always wanted to do business and I've wanted to open my own business. I've wanted to have something or somewhere that people could go and find something uniquely mine. Um, but I'm thinking about this as, you know, a business venture and, I just want to know, has anyone else, like, ever, because of, you know, COVID and everything going on, come up with something, uh, whether it's a business idea or just an event or a desire to do something, because of the lack of things that we can currently do, 
for example, you know, because that community is lacking, I really want to build a place with a lot of community, but I've never had the drive to really do something in this format at that capacity ever. Um, so I, I just, I find it so interesting that, you know, because of the, the climate of the way that the world around us is working, it can really affect how we feel and how we react to things. And, and I, it's just, it's just an interesting study. Um, speaking of that, you know, it kind of makes me think of when I'm studying characters and, and writing, we have to think so much about setting and, you know, we give we can list off the details as authors, right? We can put those things out there, but I think more of the details of the, the climate, the setting of a story comes through how the characters feel, you know, what they're driven to do, because that has a lot, by and large, a big effect on, you know, what's going on in the world. So I'm stumbling, stumbling over my words here, but what's going on in their world affects why they're doing what they're doing and how they're doing it. And I guess I've just never really felt that much of a push in my own personal life until, you know, recently and feeling all those, man, I just wish that we'd have a moment without masks. I wish that I could go into a grocery store without having to have something covering my face. I wish that, you know, I could go up and hug my friends or shake someone's hand when I meet them. Like, all of these different things that you know, we take for granted before. And it really goes to show that you don't know what you have until it's gone. But that is really true of fictional worlds as well. And I have been working a little bit more lately on writing and I'm currently working on a novel called Just Your Typical Super Spy. Um, some people have read parts of it. It is uh, a beta version on my website, genevievenowellbooks.weebly.com. The link is in my Instagram bio. It's on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can find it in various different places. Um, but it's... On there, I do have this novel out in varying chapters for people to read. And I've been working really hard on this because I feel as though it is a pinnacle of my current level of writing ability. Um, I've always seen it as some of my best writing, some of my best scenes. And I don't know if that's just because I feel most connected to this and it's not just like uh, an imaginative thing. It's more of like... I have imagined this scenario for so long that it really clicks with me and I feel connected to it. I don't know if it's that or what it is, but I do feel that it is some of my better writing and I have for quite some time. But anyway, I, I really struggle to write this because I try to push myself to do my best and I don't like to do, you know, just repetition and everything like that. And I was writing on, in this book the other day, which was kind of a big step for me because it's been a couple of months since I've really sat down and added things to it. Uh, I guess, yeah, I think my son was like one month when I, I went out and did this last. But anyway, um, I was sitting down and trying to, you know, just get everything flowing and forcing myself to be in the writing zone because... I, I don't know if everyone hears this, but the, I've heard it and it's so true. The more you just write, the better you will get. Or the more you just write, the more into it you will get. Because, you know, it's starting. That's the hardest part. And a lot of people definitely feel that way. And I that's a whole other tangent for later. But anyway, I've been forcing myself into that just starting, just writing. And half of the way that I do that is by keeping the story fresh. And the way that I can, you know, keep the story fresh is to go back and reread. And sometimes, you know, we think we've re we've read everything, whatever. And yeah, we've read it a million times. We could probably quote it verbatim, but we're going to reveal a detail that we put in there that we didn't remember. And it's going to affect how we write, or it's going to give us an idea for the future. And this novel is the first novel in a five-part series. So... I have been very careful to not only put in a lot of detail that I'm going to be using throughout the book as normal, but I also have been trying to put in 
details that will affect the plot line down the road. Now, I know what that plot line is. I'm not just writing it and then hoping that something will come to me. And some authors can do that and it's great, but I am not one of them. <laughs> so I am not in that boat, but it I have been very purposeful about the things that I put in and how they can connect to what's at the end. So then as I go back and reread things, I can go, oh, this detail I put in here, I know I didn't mean for it to be in another one of the other books in the series. I'm going to take and build on that because it's going to build the character in this way that's going to lead to the end of this. And soon enough, I'm inspired and I'm on fire and I'm just going and going and going and I'm writing and I can't stop. Um... And so rereading really helps me with that. But as I reread things too, you know, you can catch those errors. I personally, previously, when I started writing, wow, that was a lot of modifiers there. I started out writing in a paper notebook. And I really enjoy that. I do like to physically write things down a lot. And if I'm writing something that I want to be very special or a specific scene or if I haven't written in a long time and I need to urge myself back into it, I will paper write. And when I paper write, I don't have to necessarily see what came before or what's coming after. I can just focus on what I'm writing right then. And then I transfer that, you know, to uh, document on the computer. And I do really like that. But it's also a lot more difficult when you are doing that to make sure that everything transfers correctly. It gives you a great opportunity to edit, but it's just a lot of work that I just don't think that I'd be able to write as much at the capacity that I do write if I was always following that model. So this novel is really just, it's one big document and I just keep going and going and going. And as, you know, I'm writing, I can go back and edit. And I think that's one of my best tools. I catch a lot of mistakes. A, a lot of things go very well when I write that way. And this novel specifically means a lot to me. Um, as I mentioned, I feel as though it's some of my best writing. And it's also something that I've shared with quite a few people. And I'm very proud of it. Um, and I have come to realize through that that for authors who are struggling with, you know, is my book going to be good? Is it going to be X, Y, or Z? We have to put out to others what we've written. Our, our babies need to be thrown out into the world. And, you know, you may want a total stranger to read it, but that's probably not going to happen right away. However, beta groups do exist, and I can I can speak about that at another time. But, for the most part, you know, you're going to want to share it with people that you care about because even if they don't care about it as much as you because no one will, especially with your first novel, they're going to care about you and so they're going to put in the extra effort. They aren't just going to tear you down. They're going to give you the better critiques and I think that that's the best way to start putting your book out there, putting your writing out there for other people is with the soft kind remarks from the people who care about you. Because if you're totally destroyed right away, you're not going to keep going. But if you don't get enough of those critiques eventually, your writing is going to go stagnant and it will suck. Just, just how it's going to go. Um, anyway, so I would highly recommend if you're looking for anything that you need, like in terms of reading, um, having someone read, definitely have a family member and someone who you know is going to be gentle with you because it probably does have a lot of mistakes. It's your first writing or it's something that's really close to you. But after that, you know, put it out to someone who's going to be harsh. It'll be okay. You're, you'll survive. Um, and then just go from there. All right, everybody, that's all for today's podcast. We will see you on Saturday with the next episode. Until then, talk to you soon. Music.